I'm Traveling John, and I'm going to travel and sketch. Join me on the adventure. We're taking a short drive from Auburn, California into the steep canyon of the American River in the California State Recreation Area. So in the last vlog I did on No Hands Bridge, you saw me do the black and white sketch. Now before I go into more of that, I'd like to show you a little vignette of photographs and videos I've taken around the American River, just so that you can enjoy seeing what it's like. And also at the end, I sort of focus on the old quarry, what's left of it, and then I go back to No Hands Bridge. So I hope you enjoy this little vignette, and then I'll get back to talking to you about the sketch and the, and the color application I'm gonna be doing. Well, I hope you enjoyed that vignette of photographs and movies I did along the American River. And of course, I've showed some pictures of No Hands Bridge and some photographs of the old quarry that was built. And of course, there's not much left and there's still a cave. I didn't show that part either. You can't go into the cave, but it's interesting to go up and see the outside of it. So the next part of this vlog is to show you how I'm going to apply the color to this black and white sketch. And like I've done on others, I started out with a watercolor. I scanned that and I also scanned this and I'm putting them both together with a computer software program called Photoshop. And that's the next thing we're going to do. So I hope you join me in that process. This is the black and white sketch on my computer screen in the software program Photoshop. And uh, as you know, I work in layers. This is the color, uh, watercolor included with the black line. And I'm gonna turn the black line off. So now you can see the watercolor without the black line sketch. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tint that sky area because I like the idea of it looking more in the late afternoon uh, rather than um, uh, the green all in there. Now I'm choosing the whole thing and I'm going to separate where I tinted. Uh, actually, I'm going to work with those black lines and make them a color to go along with that sort of tangerine look uh, or uh, soft orange look. So now I've chosen the lines. I'm going to make a layer and I filled that in with the color. I'm going to take the lines off so you can see that area that I filled in. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take an eraser, a soft eraser, and sort of erase those lines on that particular color layer. As you can see the color layer as I get closer, all those lines are colored. And I'm going to sort of softly erase those lines that uh, go into the trees. So I'm going to get uh, my eraser tool. There it is. And I got a wide brush there that's soft to just softly take out that color on the trees. And uh, here we go. A little bit off to the right. So now it gives me that effect of the distance and also the late afternoon colors on those trees in the far distance. 
By the way, when, uh, when this picture is actually looking west, so you can, it's not uh, looking to the east, north, or south, so th that way the sun is setting, or, or is beginning to go late in the day in that direction. Now I'm going to work with the lines just a little bit more. Taking out the black a little bit. Soften in certain areas. Yep, just I, I try to picky about some of the effects I want. I don't want it to be. Uh, I, I don't want it in the color translation of this work. I don't want it to be too black in certain areas. Now I'm going to be working on the uh, train itself. Uh, it has green in it, and I want to get the green out, so I, I have a uh, path chosen, as you can see in blue. Oops, 23 pixels, that's way too much. Three is good. Okay, so now I've chosen that area, and again, I'm in that layer of the watercolor. And I'm going to change the hue and saturation of that watercolor layer, which is behind the black uh, line work. actually the very bottom of this work. I'm going to take the selection edges off of it and now that area is still being selected it's just you don't see it because those little ants aren't dancing around it. That way you can see what I'm doing a little bit better. So now I'm going to the hue and saturation taking the saturation down to give it more of a gray look There we go. And actually, take it all out. I'm going to lighten it up a little bit. That's too dark. Huh? Yeah. That works. So, the next thing I'm going to do. So see all the trees in sort of the middle ground, well actually still in the background. Uh, I want to take some of the black out of that and give it a little bit of color too. I'm going to be using uh, a blue for that process, sort of a steel blue. See how I'm uh, chosen that black, those black lines. I'm giving them a little blue, blue tint. And again, this is on an overlay over the black. Now I'm using a little green to give a little bit of a green tint. And because it's on a low, uh, uh, overlay, I can uh, adjust that. It looks very rough, but the finished effect will work. Working with the hue and saturation, like make it a little darker. Again, it's on a layer, so I can control it that way. That's better. That puts it a little bit further back and not so dark a black. So now I've cleaned it up a little bit. Now what I'm going to do is work with that white smoke that's coming out of the engine at the front of the train. So I got uh, that selected. And what I want to do is on a separate layer again, I want to put some white in there. So I got a real big brush and I just painted right in the middle so it sort of dissolves out at the end. That's the effect I want. Most of the steam's coming out of the front. This is a steam locomotive in that era. <clears throat> and I want to tint the last part of that steam just a little bit more white, so I'm going to uh, change the brush size, get it the right size, and just add a little white towards the end, just softly. And 
this one. There we go. <laughs> now I'm picking those rocks, uh, choosing those rock areas, and I'm working in the ink line area. I'm selecting those areas, and I'm going to go down to the watercolor layer, which is base, and I'm going to work with the hue and satate, saturation to make them look more like granite. So I'm taking the green out of it because that's a green watercolor wash. And I'm going to do that, and you watch me do that with different areas that um, are supposed to look like stones, but they're supposed to be gray granite rocks. Take the saturation out, get back into that granite look. Lighten those ones up front a little bit. Now I'm going to the other side, same idea. So I lighten those up, same methodology. way in the foreground. I selected those two. The next thing I'm going to do is work with that water. I think it's a little bit too greenish blue. So I'm going to um, put a layer on top of that. And again, it's on top of the watercolor, that layer and I'm going to fill it with a blue. That's my foreground color. There's a blue. Now it's solid, but with the filters, watch me work with the filters. Look at all those different filters you can use. Okay, that's the filter I'm deciding upon. And again, you've heard me talk about the color filter. That's the color, and I can adjust it in that layer for strength, whether it be real strong blue or lighter blue. So I get the blue that I'm happy with. More natural blue. Now, you know, there's a lot of black in this for a color illustration, so I'm going to actually help those rocks come out. And I'm going to select them with the selection, uh, the lasso selection tool. And here's an example of what I'm going to be doing. That's a very rough example. That's just to show you because I've already done all that work. And I've created a layer. So there they are. There's all the rocks I want to use. But I'm not going to use them that way. They look too flat. What I'm going to do again is I'm going to select that layer of all those solid grays. I'm going down to the layer that has the water color on it. I'm going to copy that and I'm going to bring it up just below that layer of the solid gray rock images. I'm going to paste special, paste in place. There it goes. Now that's just underneath that solid gray. Now I'm going to change, okay, there I, now what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to change the gray value below back with the color tool <clears throat> and there you go with the rocks that's what I'm doing now I'm lighting up the green that's around the trees and once more it's way down at the bottom on the watercolor area lighten it up and after I lightened it up I could see that that uh, the bark on the tree was too green so I selected that with the lasso tool Again, on the very bottom watercolor layer, I'm going to change the hue and saturation, saturation because that's supposed to be gray. I'm thinking that in terms of a digger pine, which is more common around our area. Here's a finished printed artwork of No Hands Bridge. 
including the ink line sketch and the color. And this very, um, I would say, challenging is the best word for it when you're working on the computer because you're uh, working with light that's coming behind the color into your eyes. And then once you get it printed out, whatever artwork you're doing, you're dealing with reflective light that hits the pigment and then comes back into your eyes. So there's a difference there in trying to get the balance right is sometimes a challenge. And in this case, the first printout I did of this artwork was too dark in color. So I had to go back in, make adjustments, light, lighten up the water, the sky, the bridge, and I got closer to what I was very happy with. So I hope you enjoyed that process. You didn't see what I went through in terms of trying to make the print and making adjustments. But you get the idea of what's going on in producing something like this. And if you are interested, again, in purchasing a printout on museum quality paper and uh, Eglisee print, you're more than welcome to go to Etsy.com and look up my store. But actually, it might be easier for you to go to my website because on my website, www.travelandsketch.com. You'll see two easy links, so you don't have to try to explore to find my store. You can go directly to it. So if you go to my website, www.travelandsketch.com, you'll be able to find a link there, a button to hit for Etsy, and also a button to hit to go to directly to my channel on YouTube to see all the different um, travel and sketch adventures I've done so far. And of course, I hope to do more. And I also hope that you'll invite other people to that channel and subscribe yourself. You know, lastly, uh, I would really like to hear from you with regards to what I'm doing. So um, your opinions are appreciated. And you can go to my uh, email account, which is travelandjohn at gmail.com and let me know what you're thinking. So thanks again for joining me on this adventure and I hope there's more to come and have a great day. Mm -hmm.